election. Presiding is Commissioner Justice Emil Schott. With him are Commissioners Professor Henry Tamensabu and Patrick Patin Echamp. The sitting for today, the 18th day of February 2019, is in session. Good morning, sir. And you are welcome. You may sit down. Thank you, sir. I will ask you some questions and um, the answers you give are very important to the workings of the commission. So please be as direct and as candid as possible. Yes, my lord. Very well. Um, would you, for the purposes of the record, state your full name and position to the commission? Um, my name is Samuel Kudu Azugu. The British Subtenant of Police, for sir. Commander in charge, National Security, SWAT. Very well. Um, by your position, and even the way you are dressed, it is all right to assume that you are a police officer. Is that right? Yes, my lord. And is it also right to assume that you are on second line to the national security? Yes, my lord. And for how long have you done that? For how long have you been on second line to the national security? Uh, my lord, over a year ago. Is it possible to give a specific time when you started? That is about... Uh, because it was February, um, about five days, a year and five days, because I took over in, in February, I think 12 or so, at command. As a commander of the SWAT team, would you please describe your duties and responsibilities to the commission? Uh, my lord, um, as the commander of the SWAT team, um, I am in charge of policemen who are posted to the national security to serve as the SWAT unit, in the SWAT unit. And my responsibilities include uh, taking direct instructions from my supervisor um, who is the director of operations as security and I uh, act on whatever instructions that he gives me to use my office to do. Very well, DSP, are you in position to tell the commission the composition of the national security SWAT team? Yes, my lord. Um, uh, I am the commander and I have a chief inspector who is the station commander, station officer, sorry, um, deputized by another inspector. I have 30, 31 men for operational purposes, then two office staffs. If I say office staffs, uh, a secretary and a logistic state officer. So then, from the number you have just given, you have 33 members of staff. Is that so? Yes. As me, my uh, station officer, and the, the, his deputy inspector. So we are 36, my lord. 36. Yes, my lord. Very well. Now, we are also told that the National Security SWAT team has civilian operatives. Are you aware of that? Um, my lord. We don't have civilian component of this 
national security is what? But we have national security operatives at the Secretary, National Security Council. As and when the need arises based on the information that we are to act on, uh, especially with regards to surveillance, intelligence, recognizance that have been done, and we are to act. We um, sometimes collaborate in joint forces to tackle the problem. Now, these civilian operatives, would you be able to tell the commission that is, if you know whether they are trained or not to undertake the kind of duties you assign them to? My Lord, I, I know for sure that those who are always used, um, asked to report to me, they are trained because from the interactions and the knowledge that I have about them, so because sometimes we, we even train with them, so some of the courses that we attend, they, they take part. So the, um, the Secretariat will not bring somebody who is not trained to join us in such operations. So DSP, from your answer, are you telling the commission that you have specific individuals for the one year you have been in charge that you acted with or operated with? Is that what you are saying? Uh, I don't know. My Lord, okay, I don't let me rephrase. My question is this. Are you telling the commission that there are some specific individuals, okay, limited number specific, that you have always used whenever they need be, and I mean civil operatives. Uh, uh, my Lord, that's not exactly what I mean. Very well. I, I'm saying not all of them are trained. Those who come join us in operations, mm -hmm. not all of them are trained. But I know that most of them I've, I've been given training. Okay. Now, on their training, have they been trained, for instance, as to how to handle weapons? No, my lord. Are they trained in crowd handling, for instance? Um, my lord, crowd handling, we, as part of the training, we, um, they are giving an armed combat training, an armed combat training. You know, uh, the nature of the uh, operations is uh, said that um, we, we don't do crowd, crowd uh, management, you know, activities. We only act on information which leads us to particular locations and we do searches and uh, conduct our operations which are mostly covered in nature. So then, let me ask you again. Are you telling the commission that the security operate um, the civilian operatives within the national security. Yes, sir. As you sit here, you can't tell as to whether they receive crowd handling training or management, if you like. Yes, my my lord, I can I, I cannot affirm to that. What about the police component? Yes, my lord. Chief. So, what if in the course of carrying out your duties, you are confronted by a number of people. How do you think these people are going to act since they have not received the necessary training? My Lord, uh, uh, yes, uh, we've never met such a challenge before. So 
Um, I cannot best, you know, give information on this. What duties are normally assigned to the civilian operators? Okay, um, when we, uh, um, I don't want to divulge, but when we go for any at any location for operations, uh, because the police components are armed, sometimes when you have to move in to trap people down and you are holding a gun, it may cause problem because maybe the person will try to resist arrest, you are armed and anything at all can happen so that maybe the gun may fire um, by mistake and may cause problem. So when we are moving, the armed men are there to give us cover so that the operatives move in together with me sometimes. Then when we are supposed to tackle the issue, we move and efficiently execute the, the uh, assignment. Okay, ESB, let me ask you this. What specific duties are normally assigned to the civilian operatives? Uh, that one, uh, my lord, I can't tell. It is only when the when we, we, we are going on operation and they are supposed to augment us that I can say but, but but there are other rules that they play, very major rules, important rules that they play at the National Security Council. Um, I'm limiting you at the moment to the SWAT team. Yes sir. Because from time to time you have you have carried operations with them, haven't you? Yes please. You have? Yes please. Okay. So think of one of those operations, and if it is possible, if you want to, tell the commission what role the civilian operators play. Yes, most of them, depending on the location, they have look, local knowledge of areas. So we assign the operators based on the area that we are proceeding to, and they will have the better knowledge of the that some of these men were said to have evidence of assault. Would you be surprised? Evidence of assault as seen having been beaten. Would you be surprised? My Lord, as at what point, my Lord? From the police station. Oh, my Lord, yes, of course. My Lord, I... I, I I, I later got to know that some of them reported or showed marks of um, assault on them to the, uh, the companies. You are not able to tell the commission as to how they came to have this evidence of assault. Is that what you are saying? As a commander on the day with your team, you arrested men. After arresting them, you took them to a police station. Subsequently, we've seen pictures or we've been given evidence that um, they had. In fact, some of them, we are told, or the commission is told, sustained cuts to their head. Would you be surprised? Um, my Lord, as um, I, I already stated, as at the time I took them to the police station, I've not seen any mark on them, and none of them inform me that they were injured, my lord. Would you also be surprised that I have seen here a picture of one of them with a blood-stained vest? Would that surprise you? No, my lord. That wouldn't surprise you? Yes, my lord. Is it therefore right for me to suggest to you that as at the time you were taking the man to the police station, he had that blasting shirt. 
Is that right? My Lord, um, I can easily identify that gentleman okay. because after his arrest, he was wearing a white t-shirt. And I even interviewed him. That time, there was no thing in the singlet. But I believe for one reason or another, he used, later when we left, he used the, that singlet to, you know, wipe the blood that may be, be coming, oozing from his cut, which I did not see. But at the time, I took him to the police station. His singlet was not soaked in blood. Yes, sir. Yes, my lord. How come you are so sure of the gentleman I'm referring to? Be because, my lord, he, you, he was wearing a white... Later on, I saw it on in the media. I saw that particular gentleman in the media with blood. To be frank, when I saw the blood, he must say, wow. Oh, so, sorry, am I... Oh, oh, and how come that this thing was there? I didn't see it. But I, I realized that because when you get a cut, maybe immediately the blood will not be oozing. But when you, you, you know, inter, uh, you, you disturb the cut, then it starts to ooze. I think that's why at that particular moment, you know, he, he, uh, we could not find it. the blood oozing for him to use the same way to wipe it. That's my. Is there a possibility that a cat in his head might have come from the manhandling of your men? My lord, so far as my men were the arresting officers, anything that happens to a suspect, you know, can be attributable to them. But it is up to um, the the victim to establish as to how how he came to sustain that injury, whether he fell over and hit his leg against something, or whether one of my men used something on him, or any other means of uh, sustain, sustenance of injury, sustaining injuries. These men of yours, how were they dressed up on the day? Um, because it was a combined team, we had a police component and the national security component, uh, 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 operatives component. The operatives were, the police were in police gear and the operatives were in black and brown trousers. ESP. If you say police gear, were they dressed like this gentleman sitting here? No, we have operational uniforms that um, we use when we embark on operations. And would you please describe to the commission what this operational uniform is? Yes, um, we have the long boot with tucked in trousers over a blouse. Uh, we have something we call um, camouflage uniforms. We have a uh, long sleeve blouses over tucked in. And mostly our um, unit we wear um, our trousers with which are tucked into the long boots with the other uh, accoutrements like body armors, uh, helmets, sometimes as the situation demands, we put on other um, accoutrements which um, enhances the jobs. Because sometimes we go to the beach to lay siege. Sometimes you go 
you will go and lay on bush for a particular um, assignment and mosquitoes and all of you, you will fall prey to them and other writers. So based on the type of operation that we conduct, we take along and then sometimes too, the rain will be at the mercy of the rain. And we do all this, we just put it, them on us, you know. As yes, we, let's stay on the day and the reference. Yes, 31st of January, 2018. Yes, my Lord. At La Paolishi. Yes, my Lord. What uniform were your men wearing? They were wearing operational uniform, as I described to you. Because um, we, 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 uh, the uniforms, when we are operating. Okay, let me ask you. We have all seen pictures, including the commissioners. Yes, my lord. Of some men dressed in brown khaki, trousers, black t shirt, with a vest which is also brown, and some wear, and wearing masks. Yes, carrying man. weapons. Are these your men? Carrying weapons? In some of the pictures. Wow. Um, my lord, on that particular day, the only people who were... Before you go there, are these your men? I, I, I've not seen those pictures, so I can't confirm, my lord. Unfortunately, I don't have these pictures in colors, but then you can easily tell. My Lord, let the record reflect that the witness has been shown pictures of the men I'm referring to. Yes, this one. This one, I can confirm. Yeah, we... These are your men? Yes, yes. Very well. yes my Lord. Thank you. What about that? Because it's black, black and white, and the, this one easily identified, but this one I cannot ascertain. Very well. But then, for the record, you can tell that the picture I am showing you, even though it's black and white, yes, my Lord. they are your men. Yes, my Lord. You can also say for the record that some of them are wearing helmets. Yes, my Lord. Over masks. Yes, my Lord. You can also say for the record that some of them, though they are not wearing helmets, Yes, my they lord. are masked. Yes, my lord. Now, talking about weapons, on this gentleman here standing by, uh, behind the car, what is hanging by his side? I can't ascertain because it's black and white. I can't ascertain. Very well. Now, you have told the commission yes, that man. your men fired gunshots. Yes, my lord. But then you are doubting when I told you that they were carrying arms. Is that it? Yes, sir. Um, my lord, I said we issued arms to the police. And I even ordered them to give the warning shots. What about the civilian components? Mm -hmm. Nobody was issued with the gun. Now, these men we see here, yes, my is Lord. there any, to the best of your knowledge, yes, my civilian Lord. component amongst them? At least you were with them on the day? Yes, my Lord. You set off together? Yes, my Lord. Yes. So tell the commission. Um, my Lord, I can't, I can't confirm from this picture because it's black and white. Very well. Yeah. Did any of the civilian component, any member of the civilian component, wear the apparel for the day, which is a black t-shirt, brown trousers, brown vest, and mask, to the best of your knowledge? Yes, my lord. Did any of them carry guns? Oh, to the best of my knowledge, my lord, none of them carry guns.
Now, ESP, from your account, anyway, before I come to that. My Lord, uh, I think the, na the name has come. Can I have permission? Yes, now that you have admitted that your men were wearing masks, let me ask you, what was the purpose for the mask? My Lord, um, as a matter of fact, uh, that particular operation was among a lot of operations that we have already conducted. And... Um, as SWAT, some of the men that we go on the field with are normally used as um, informants you know, within the area. They, we use them as surveillance officers, recce officers, who give us valuable information from um, areas that most of us cannot um, go. So when there's any operation and we approach a particular location where they know that they can easily be identified and you know making uh, any other subsequent operation um, not successful, they you know, we tend to make them to use a mask to disguise himself. But it is not for any ulterior or bad motive. Yes, B. You know that that was an election day. Am I right? Yes, my lord. And the election was taking place within the same constituency as you were going for your surveillance. Am I right? Yes, my lord. I know you are trained not to ask questions, but then let me ask you. As you sit here, would you be able to tell the commission why that particular operation had to be carried out on that day? Uh, my lord, as I already integrated to this commission, national security who always operates on intelligence that comes to the notice of officers. And on that particular day, that is on the 31st, um, where I was made to understand that there was some infiltration going on of arms and ammunition going on. And um, there, there was a surveillance which had been placed on the people who were involved in that um, nefarious activity. And at that particular moment, even though it's, that's why when we got to the location, um, the perpetrators wanted to take advantage, according to our intel, wanted to take advantage of the situation of, that is, the by-election, to perpetrate whatever um, intention that they had. And uh, um, that's why that day we have to um, move and move 
cautiously. And I, as a leader of the team, I took into cognizance the fact that it was an election day and, you know, that day, that location too was, um, uh, there was a poli two police stations nearby. And that was why we, I was so tactical, you know, on arrival at the scene. Because we were not even, we had not even contemplated to move. We were staying put at that location for further, you know, uh, information as to whether to deploy or not to deploy. My Lord. To deploy or not to deploy. Did you deploy? We, we didn't. We were only uh, in the initial stages, as I told this commission. When we arrived, there was traffic on the main street. So I took it upon myself to make sure that the area was cleared of all vehicular traffic to make easy movement of traffic. So that was when, when uh, the whole thing started. Now, TSB, from your account, you were actually in the area to carry out an operation. Did you manage to? Please. Did you manage to carry out the operation for which originally you were there? My Lord, because of the incident that occurred, we could not. So we have to abort. So then, if I heard you right, there's an intel of a stockpile of ammunition in a house. A team that included 25 policemen decided to abort it because of a certain incident. Is that so? My Lord, as I indicated, due to the incident that resulted from the shooting that attracted us to the house, at a point, I have to use my discretion to know that when this thing was, the shooting was going on, it attracted a lot of onlookers. And also, for the fact that the police station is a block away from that location, I found it prudent to withdraw the men. But before that, we called for reinforcement for them to come and take over. Because when they come, their mandate may be different from us because we were coming to, but when they come, since the police come, they will secure the place so that any other further um, um, as evidence that will be available, they will secure it at the location for any possible investigations. When you talk about evidence here, would that include the stockpile of arms you were supposed to go and secure? Um, intelligence, my lord, there is the probability that you get your intelligence right. Now, yes. subsequently, subsequently, the election we all know ended at six o'clock. Is that so? Yes, my lord. Did you make any attempt to go and check whether truly this stockpile of arms existed? Uh, my lord, um, the police. CID, the regional police command took over the premises. You know, so we did not go back there. You know. 
as a team to go and uh, search for hands. Because before we left the scene, the reinforcement, the backup had arrived and they secured the location. Please, please stay ESP. Is it right for me to suggest to you that as you sit here now, you do not know whether one searches were conducted and two whether any weapons subsequently have been found. Is that right? My Lord, I can't um, answer this question because um, I don't know what police investigations have resulted. Will it, from your answer, be right for me to suggest to you that indeed, if you were there for the operation you claim to be there for, that was then a failure, is it right? Um, my Lord, I'd like to indicate that the reason why we have to withdraw or abort was that I took into consideration the probable loss of human life and also the fact that there was a by-election which was going on next door and for that matter we did not want to um, escalate the situation because as i've already indicated i didn't i didn't know the kind of activity which was going on in that building compound for those shots to be firing from the end i couldn't estimate the firepower at that time even though we could, you know, attack, you know, defend ourselves and by moving in, but for the fact that the, the gate was closed, locked, and the firing was still on, we didn't want to make any attempt of, you know, advancing. So, tactically, we have to withdraw and call for reinforcement for them to come and take over the situation. Um, the 35 civilian operatives. Yes, my lord. Do you know all of them? <laughs> um, I know a few of them. Personally, I know a few of them. But not all of them. Will you be able to give their list to the commission? I mean, list of names, the, because they were men you operated with on the, the day. Uh, I don't have them. They are not available. Can you me. provide that? Yes, my lord. How soon? Um, I can't give uh, a tentative uh, period, but from here I will go to the uh, secretariat for them to give me. Yes, address. if you are giving up to close up day tomorrow, can you provide that information to the commission? I'll do my best, my lord. Very well. Now, had you previously worked with all these 
35 civilian operatives. Um, my Lord, I repeat the question. Okay. Is there any of these civilian operatives you were working with for the first time on the day? Um, I can't. I can't identify any of them because, my Lord, um, throughout we have been operating. You know, this this is one of the operations that we had that uh, number of police and operatives. You know, sometimes five, five police, five operatives, ten police. 15 operatives, you know, not in that, but I can't recollect that I don't, have not worked with any of them, but we work together as a team. So do I take it, if I'm wrong, then, that you had previously worked with all the civilian operatives, though not as a group, as individuals. In individuals. Under different operations. Yes, my, yes, my lord. Yes, my so lord. So then you were familiar with every single one of them. Yes, my lord. Very well. Now, DSP, let me ask you this. There is the belief by a section of our community that the persons described as civilian operatives were not actually operatives of the national security. What do you have to say about that? Uh, my Lord, I will, um, that issue I've been, you know, listening to it on the radio, on the media, but when I listened to it, I said, ah, are they talking about the people that have been absorbed, have been employed by the state to work at national security or other people. Because to the best of my knowledge, they are under the employment of the national security. What informs this knowledge? Pardon, sir? What informs this best knowledge of yours? Because we are always with them at the secretariat, at the National um, Security Council. Um, I know their movements, their everything, their records that are kept. You know, as, as a member of the squad team, when we, we meet as a management component, you know, we discuss about general issues and all these things come Bay. So, you are putting on record that on the day under reference and for the operation you carried out, all the civilian components, according to you, on record, uh, people you had previously worked with and can confirm that they belong to the best of your knowledge. Yes, to the national security. Yes, my lord. Now, DSP, from the picture I showed you, yes, my lord. We saw these men in a vehicle with the police symbol or insignia, if you like. Yes, my lord. Is that a police vehicle? Yes, sir. Uh, it's the, it's the vehicle which is on charge at the National Security SWAT unit. Um, if you say it's a vehicle on charge, what does that mean? Um, For the benefit of the civilian aid? Yes, when I was taking over as the commander, it was part of the vehicle that I were bequeathed to me by my predecessor in the handing over. It's on the vanos. Did your predecessor tell you where he secured the vehicle from? My predecessor also took over from 
one um, that from the previous government is an ASP Charles Begu, who is currently on a UN mission in Sudan. He handed over those those vehicles and all other uh, materials at the unit to him, and he also handed seal to me. Yes, me. To the best of your knowledge. Yes, my lord. Do all police vehicles have a GP number? No, my lord. Now, would you be surprised if I tell you, for instance, that we have evidence given in this court by the Director General of Police in charge of operations that that vehicle does not belong to the police? Would you be surprised? I can't, my lord. I am not in the position to answer this one. My Lord, I, I, would, I would like to make a point clear. Those vehicles, according to my, my the, the info, information that I have, was that they were given to the unit since the year 2012. But as to how they were given who gave and what, I cannot tell. Yes, me. First of all, you were in the area for confident building patrol. Am I right? Yes, please. And the election task force was also operating in the area. Am I right? Yes, please. And you were aware of that? Yes, please. Did they know of your presence in the area? The election security task force. Were they aware that you and your men were also operating within the same parameters? Uh, my Lord, due to the, the nature of the expanse of the constituency, you know, I don't know which of the task force you uh, you are you are meaning because they are electoral areas. Very well, let me help you. Yes, sir. For every election, there is security task force. Are you aware? Yes, please. Very well. That is those officially tasked with manning the polling stations. Yes, please. And your team was not one of them. Yes, please. Very well. And now you were going to carry out an operation. Yes, please. In their area. Yes, please. Which you have yes. admitted is not too far from one of the polling stations. Yes, please. Did you find it prudent to inform the election security task force? Um, my my lord, since uh, our mandate, our our mission that morning was not related to elections, we I did not find it prudent at that moment because. If I tell them that we are in the area, the next question is, what are you coming to do? You know, and intelligence, that the, our intelligence which we are gathering may be um, violated. And that's why you know, we can find it Now, yes, me. Let me put this directly to you. There is a belief by a cross-section of our society that you and your men on the day were not the vicinity for the said surveillance operation you claim. What do you have to say? My Lord, I would like to confirm to this commission that we were there for the purpose for which I have already stated. Now, have you subsequent to your operation 
written and after action report. DSB. Yes, please. Do you have a copy available for the commission? Yes, I have the seat that I sent to my immediate boss, that is the Director of Operations and Security. And also my statement I made to the CIG investigators. I made a report. Yes, the Citrate and the report. I think I have the Citrate here. If you say secret, what do you mean? For the civilian man? S situation report, my lord. this copy yes my lord you don't mind or you do mind i i i, I mind my lord the commission can keep it very well Have you learned any lessons from what took place at La Baulation? My Lord, um, truly and truly, a lot of lessons have been learned from this unfortunate incident. Would you like to share with the Commission lessons you have learned. My Lord, um, I believe with the commission in place, every information that will, not, will have not been made known to the generality of Canadians will come out, which will in near to any future um, programs by either political parties, um, um, civil organizations, um, religious leaders, chiefs, and people of Ghana, so that whatever lessons that will be learned from this incident can put us in a better state to Ghana forward. 
Yes. What you have just told me is the expected recommendations of the commission. The question I asked you was about personal lessons, which will also help the commission in its recommendation. Have you learned any personal lessons my, going forward? And what my, are they? My Lord, I will never wish this situation that I found myself of any person, even including my enemies. Because I come to think of it, uh, an officer in charge of you creation know, with good intention. Because um, whatever we're going to do there was not on personal basis. It was for the interest of the security of the country as a whole. And if it has turned out like this, you know, me as a person, you know, my name has been bungled around, around, you know, in both positive, negative, political, and whatever. I have families, I have kids, they watch TV, they see their father being bastardized. No, you know, even though I know from deep from my heart that I'm doing my best to contribute to country. So my honorable commissioners have learned a lot of lessons from it. And I'll move forward in the last so, two strike. Yes, finally from me, are you putting it on record that you do not know how, for instance, this person who is said to have sustained a gunshot wound to the leg, you do not know how it, it happened? My, my Lord, yes, my Lord. Mr. Chairman, your witness. Lord, if I may. Yes, my Lord. Uh, the Commission will ask you some questions. Yes, my Lord. According to your evidence, you had intelligence report. Yes, my Lord. There was, that there was a stockpile yes, of weapons yes, at the location uh, where you went. Yes, my lord. You use the word stockpile. Um, that is the intelligence you got, right? Yes, yes a stockpiling of arms. Yes. Okay. And so your mandate was to go and investigate whether this intelligence was true and to retrieve the stockpile of arms if they were being stored illegally. Is that not so? Yes, my lord. Who, um, our mandate there was not to investigate but to go and possibly go down of the place then conduct a search it will have been in stages. First, we will go down, we will position the men around the facility to secure it from um, infiltrators, those who may go out or come in, to enable us to approach the facility through the, the gate and conduct whatever search that we may conduct. So you secure the place? Oh, my Lord, when we arrived there, as I've stated, we, we were in the process of even positioning ourselves on the main road because we are the, 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 there was no thoroughfare for vehicles to the, to the house. So our vehicles have to be parked on the field, on the open space, including the main road along the Babaleshi route. 
So we didn't even go to that facility. We were yet to settle down. And that's why I stated that when we arrived, we realized that there was, you know, disruption in traffic, free flow of traffic. So we were trying to control and open up for vehicles to fly freely because it was a working day. So there was no thoroughfare to the house, but so you parked your vehicles on the street. Yes, sir. And some on the park, on the open space, the football field, the school football field, the edge of it, some of the vehicles, because we were 10 in number, if we say we are going to park on, along the road, it will, you know, impede traffic. So some have to move onto the field and park of the road. And that, after that, did you instruct your men to upgrade so that you could go to the location and secure the place? Oh, uh, my Lord. I gave specific instructions to them that they remain in their vehicles until I ordered them to come down. But, and that was why I even told you that I took it upon myself to control the traffic. Because I, 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 we were so circumspect about our movement because of the ongoing elections, you know, on, on the mill building, just about some meters away from the main road. So I, I, I was trying to restrict the movement of the men. So I asked them to stay put in their vehicles. And myself, including my driver, were directing the traffic to create space for other vehicles to move. You went there for a specific mission. Yes, sir. On the basis of intelligence you had, and there was a stockpile of weapons. Yes, sir. So what business did you have um, with controlling traffic? Yeah. Why didn't you go immediately to the location? If there was no men, if there was no way of taking the vehicles there, why didn't you get your men to alight and then go and secure the place? Yes, sir. That was when we were about, I was about to, to commence any possible deployment. That I saw the motorbikes coming from the other direction, which attracted my attention. So that was where everything started. You know, when I saw the motorbike in the Honorable MPs arrived from there. The, there was this banter as to why they should leave the place because, um, according to them, they were coming to protect the ballot, which I told them that look, the state has made enough provision for security, so their presence was not needed. And they didn't see reason with me, and um, there was a little banter. Even some of them tried to take pictures within the um, deputy women's organizer, which resulted in a little um, altercation, but it was solved. Because Honorable Okovanda Poi stepped in and we resolved that issue amicably. Okay, after you resolved that altercation, did you and your men then proceed to the house? So, I will, because my, I was insisting that those motorbikes, those on the motorbikes, the pillars, so some of them were carrying two passengers, some were carrying, you know, one, the pillar, I mean the pillar. So they dropped from the motor, and the motors moved away to the back of the building. Now those who dropped, I was insisting that they should leave the place because their presence may hamper our deployment, whatever we are, we are coming to do. So I was making sure that they should leave the area. And I even pointed out to Honorable Judge, uh, some judge that, my, my Honorable, these men, you cannot account for them. I know very well, maybe you didn't even contract them to come and escort you. From their own volition, they will come 
enjoying it. But if something happens, you may not even be able to account for them. So it is in your own interest for you, for you to advise them to leave the place. Okay, at what stage did you then proceed to the house? Was it when you heard a gunshot? My, my Lord. At what stage did you, after you had resolved this issue about motorbikes with some joy, at what stage did you then proceed to the house where you had intelligence that there was a stockpile of weapons? My Lord, after everything settled, yeah. They, they decided to move away okay. and moved to the back of the build, to the back of the school building where the our our tar target was the facility we were supposed to go and conduct the search for was. So when they moved there, not quite some time, we heard a gunshot and. One gunshot. Just one gunshot. Okay. So it attracted everybody's attention. So I asked some of the men, my men, to drop from the vehicles and follow me to the scene. And that time when we were proceeding, I even saw the Honorable Sam God also trotting towards that direction. Lo and behold, when we got we turned the bend from the main building, which leads to the the location where the gunshot was hit, we saw young men, heavily built young men, who were surging towards our where we were coming from. Some put throwing stones with gunshots in the background. To be frank, we were completely taken back because we didn't expect to see that spontaneous reaction from that group of people. So I told my, 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 my men, the policemen, to give warning shots. So we also give warning shots. These men who were advancing towards us and throwing stones and firing in the air were also alarmed and they started to disperse and ran back to the building, apparently where they came from. So they started running. While they were running, there were still gunshots at the background. So most of them were able to, because the gate which was open was a narrow one, most of them could not gain access before it was locked. So they couldn't enter. So there, I said, no, I don't understand. Even I had, you know, because I had a stone hit my shoulder, uh, my shoulder bone here. It landed on my shoulder bone, but after some day of massaging it, went, it subsided. So I said, no, I will not allow these boys to go scot free. We will we'll arrest them for them to answer why they should do put up this behavior. Those who were firing we didn't see them. They were in the compound, in the yard. And I don't know whether they were outside and ran inside and locked themselves or not. Because of the numbers, we, we could not see at, from their back where what was happening at the back. But when most of them entered, you know. The rest now they know where to know where to go. So they decided to run the scatter. Then I asked them, my boys to my men to arrest some of them. So we succeeded in arresting nine of them. And some of them surrendered and they were taken to the vehicles. But whilst sending them to the vehicles, I think some zero to avoid lawful arrest by you know trying to run away trying to put up resistance, you know, and the kind of, uh, the, 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 the minimum force that we all saw uh, was applied on them. That is the quote that, you know, we, we, we try to subdue them 
and bring them under proper arrest. So I ask them that they should put them in the so I'll send them to the gunshots coming from inside the compound. Yes, my lord. How many gunshots did you hear? <sighs> my lord, I can't put a number on that. Approximately. You know, I, me, I know my we, we shot six. Bits. One in shots. Yeah, six one in shots. Yes, one in shots, I assume to be you shoot in the air. Yes, my lord. Not at any particular yes, person yes. or yes, uh, my lord. We uh, shot what we give one in shots. One in shots are shot into the in the air. Yes, my lord. Okay. Now I'm saying that you can give an approximate number of gunshots you hear from inside the compound. Roughly. Um, um have you had have you seen the video of which uh, um in which it is said that there were forty nine gunshots on that day? My lord, I I seen the video of Ed audio but I can't vouch for that um, number or no, the authenticity of it. Okay, because but but you were there, and I want you to tell me approximately how many gunshots you heard from inside. From inside. Yes. Yes. Uh, to the, about between between twenty and thirty, but I can't lay put an exact number on it. Okay. So it means that your in, the intelligence which you had that there was a stockpile of weapons in this location was confirmed by the gunshots you had within the compound, right? Well, my lord, I, I believe so. Okay. So wasn't that wasn't that then your duty to make sure that you enter the house and retrieve the weapons and find out exactly how many weapons were there and whether the weapons were there legally or illegally. My Lord, yes. But uh, uh, that's why I stated that okay. reinforcement was called, called in because we, our purpose was to go and cordon of the area and conduct a search. But because those plans were not able to be material, because before we operate, we make sure that we secure the area so that no other person who may fall victim to a possible gunshot from the operation that may take place within or without the facility may be harmed. So we make sure that we secure the environment with our men before I lead and go and confront the occupants of the building. But because we were not able to, as a result of the issue that arose, we could not put those measures in place. In our attempt to execute that, by all means, may result in whatever we, we term as preventive measures in the arena of operation. So that's why we decided to withdraw, so that when the police task force which arrived, our armies would take charge of security of the house. And maybe okay, so you had 25 policemen who were armed. Yeah, no, only 10 were armed, sir. Well, 10 were armed? Yes, sir. And then you have 35 security operatives? Yes, sir. And then you asked for um, a backup? Y yes, sir. We, we, did you, and did, did you get uh, a backup from? Y yes, sir. How many people came? I, I cannot put a number because they were, they, apparently they were a standby force for the area. So they are stationed at Legon. 
and it was very proximate to the place. So when the um, call was placed for them to come, they arrived on time and took charge of the place, you know, before we moved from the location. So why didn't you then enter a house to accomplish the mission that you went there for? That's what I want. I want to understand why you aborted the mission. You had, you had 60 people. Then you had um, assistance from the East Lebanon police. Why did you abort the mission? You knew that there were weapons, a stockpile of weapons in the house. Why didn't you proceed to enter the house and take possession of these weapons or find out exactly whether they were being lawfully uh, stored there? That's what I want you to explain. Okay, my lord. We were there. Even our presence there. Listen, before you answer, you are trained. I assume that you are trained to deal with such situations. You have information that there are weapons in a particular location. Are you not trained to be able to go and retrieve the weapons? Uh, my lord, we could not underestimate. I could not underestimate the firepower which was coming from the compound. And for that matter, um, to avoid the situation from degeneration, we have to withdraw tactically, you know, so that since the police had come there, they will secure the place, they will conduct investigations. Because we could not execute our, our, our uh, intended action based on the fact that, you know, there was a disruption. Yes. So you abandoned your mission and you handed it over to the police that came. Is that what you're saying? Yes, yes, my lord. And did the police then implement your mission? Did the police <laughs> attempt to go into the house to retrieve these weapons? Yes, I, 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 I'm yet to be informed about whatever was found in the house. But do you know whether the police entered the house? Uh, they eventually, I know from um, the videos that I have watched, I've, I've been informed also that the police finally entered the house. Apart from videos, didn't they tell you what happened? Yes, the, 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 the operations commander, Accra Regin, confirmed that the police finally entered the house. And what did they find when they entered the house? My, my lord, that is what the incident that occurred I, up to now, I don't understand why it happened because i believe strongly that the kind of insurgence or the spontaneous train of stones and shooting within the compound may be a ploy or a subterfuge that they use to maybe clear whatever was in the house through any means because as I'm talking to you, me myself I have not gotten be able to enter the house because since that period I have never been to the house myself. You said the police entered the house. Yes, my lord. And do you know whether they found weapons there and whether they secured the weapons? I don't. I I I I I can't confirm, my lord. I haven't received any report since the 31st of January. Because the police is still, they are still investigating, so, you know, um, maybe they have not made it privy to some of us who are not in the investigation department. I 
Are you saying that you were overpowered or overwhelmed by what the gunshots you had and the people who were there, so you abandoned the mission? My Lord, um, how to you to say overpowered, overwhelmed, um, overwhelmed based on the fact that, as I stated to you, when we move into a crate, we make sure we secure the perimeter, we go down off, so that we make sure nobody approaches our site where we operate, so that when the need arises for guns to be fired, no innocent civilian Minding his way will fall victim. And because we, were, we had not put such measures in place as a principle of deployment, we could not execute our intended action to the maximum. Okay, your reinforcements came. Yes, my Lord. You were there. Yes, my Lord. Didn't that make it easier for you to accomplish your mission? Both your team plus the reinforcements that came. My, my Lord, yes, we could have done that. Yeah. But because of what happened, I believe strongly at that moment that whatever evidence or whatever thing that was in the house would not have been met because it may have been tampered with or you know removed from wherever it was because of the the unprovoked nature of the conduct of the people in the house. They were, you know the way they searched forward towards us. My Lord, if these warning shots were not fired, I don't Think, I don't know what will have happened to me, my men, and even the MP who was also running towards that direction. I do I don't know. Don't ask that now, I don't understand. I can't put anything on it. If I don't know why they conducted themselves in that way. So probably I believe strongly that they did that to possibly uh, clean the mess in the house before any uh, person can lay hands on them. All right, I'll move on. I'm not satisfied with your answer, but I'll move on. You said the vehicle, the police vehicle that was used yes, was allocated to the uh, SWAT team yes, in 2012. Yes, my lord. Somewhere 2012. Yeah. How many vehicles were allocated to the SWAT team by the police service? Um, my lord, I can't. I, the origin of the vehicles to the National Security SWAT, I cannot pinpoint any information on them. The only thing I know, my lord, is that when I was um, assuming office, there was a hand, there was a handing over. Um, note from my predecessor, which clearly indicates the vehicles, all the materials on charge, except the street, and I, I actually inherited it from him. You said you went with how many vehicles? Ten vehicles. Ten my vehicles. Lord. Yes, my lord. Including the one that was on the police. But that's different. Yes, yes, sir. We, we had three marked police vehicles. In, in, in that operation, sir. Okay. Uh, you heard the statement by the IGP that he was not, he did not know those vehicles. Have you heard that in the media? Yes, yes my lord. Um, yes, my lord. So, is it not surprising to you that the IGP did not know about the existence of those vehicles? in the National Security SWAT team? My Lord, he may say that based on the fact that the vehicles 
on charge national security. We don't rely on the police for maintenance, for servicing. All our maintenance and servicing requirements are addressed to the um, national security coordinator who provides funds for the maintenance. So I believe that's what um, informs the IGP to say he is not because it may not reflect in his um, records at the headquarters. And since there are police officers in the SWAT team, the National Security SWAT team, yes, sir. isn't the IGP familiar or know about the, the operations of these police officers in the National Security um, SWAT team? Yes, sir. He is aware, he is familiar, because the Director General Operations on a weekly basis attends security meeting with our uh, national security heads at the headquarters. So he briefs him on whatever is going on. But about the vehicles, that one, since time memorial, you know, if, in, if, if this issue had not cropped up, you know, me, myself, I did not know how those vehicles were brought to the unit since 2012. We, we came and met them and we are using them. And it's like, so even some of the numbers, most of the numbers are not police numbers. They are operational national security numbers on the vehicles. You know, even though you see SWAT on them, that's the situation. All right. Um, these men who were masked, who were they? Um, I was I was operating with them. Yeah, how many of them? <laughs> my my lord, um, as I as I stated already. Depending on the nature of the assignment, sometimes we go and lay ambush somewhere and we become uh, prey to mosquitoes. So we have particular gear that you wear that covers your neck and your face so that you will not get mosquito bites. So some of them, when we are moving, they put them on them as a precautionary measure. So at, at the point, they decide to put them on based on the area that they, they reach because they do, they, they, there's no need for the general public to identify that hey, this is this man going, this this man going because he comes back into that same community and uh, fetch for information, fish out for a lot of intelligence which he brings to the notice of on which we bring. So based on the location that you, they, they are, they don't wear it, but when they get to areas that they, they know, this man will identify me, this man will identify them, they put it down. If I understand what you're saying, yes, sir. the people who were masked were people who either came from that community or knew the community and I provided information and that is why they were masked. Is that what you're saying? Uh, no. In, in that situation, my Lord, I say. On this particular operation, why were they masked? I'm yet to, I'm yet to get that information. You didn't there. know. I'm yet to, my Lord. Are you aware of any policy which determines when members of the SWAT team would be masked? Is there any policy on that issue of wearing masks? Yes, my lord. What is the policy? That is. You mentioned uh, maybe you want they want protection from mosquitoes and so on, but. This was an operation during the day. Yes, my lord. This particular operation, you say you cannot tell why 
some of them were masks. Yes, but definitely my, it wasn't for protection from mosquitoes. Yes, my lord, I use that um, example yes. to buttress the fact that in preparation for a possible, you know, staying outside overnight, they keep those materials on them so that if our operations take, takes us deep into the night, you know, they bring, bring them out and use it. But whilst on that particular day, those you saw in mask. I am yet to know why they decided to put it on. I have to admit that. Even though you were in charge of the team, yes, my lord. you didn't know why. Yes, my lord. I'm yet to know, sir. Now, you knew that there was a, a polling station nearby where you went with your team. Yes, my lord. Do you think it was prudent for some of your men to be in masks close to that polling station. Don't you think that that creates fear and panic among the civilians who will be engaged in voting? My, my, my lord, um, as I've already indicated to you, we didn't go there purposely for the elections, but um, if me, I see any of them masked whilst operating, I'll ask them to, I'll ask you why he has um, put on the mask. So that if it didn't, that it didn't give me any tangible explanation, I, I ask him to demask. But did, on this occasion, you did not ask them why they were masked. I, I, I couldn't, because of the reaction, the, the way, turn of events, due to the turn of events, I, I, my lord, all this thing from when we heard the gunshot, it took not, it, it lasted just about 15 minutes, space of 15 minutes, approximately, 15 yes, minutes. And when, when you set up, were these people not masked? No, sir. So at what stage do they put on the masks? I believe I believe when we reached the the grounds, because if I had seen them wearing masks, I'll ask them to remove them. If you don't give me a tangible reason, I'll ask you to remove it. And when you got there you saw that they were they had put on the mask and you didn't ask them or you didn't get them to remove the mask. My, my lord, I indicated that we were stationary in our vehicles. I asked them nobody to drop down until we started moving towards and as the commander, I have, I, I have to be at the forefront and I wouldn't have the luxury of time to, you know, the midst of all those chaotic, that chaotic situation to go about the asking them with all due respect. So it was after the whole issue, um, incident that I realized that some of them had actually put on their masks, even though you know, they were not supposed, some of them were, but some are from the locality who, are, um, who have the legitimate this them right to you know, mask themselves to avoid being identified as a national security, not for for uh, them to be identified that they have come to operate in the area, but to give them up, out so that um, their effectiveness as um, informants, um, surveillance officers will be neutralized. So that is the basic reason why some of them must. All right, um, you got to know from the media that some people sustained gunshot wounds, right? Yes, my lord. Do you know where and how they sustained gunshot wounds? My lord, um, when we 
arrested the nine. And including the, the person who is being shown, who, who is now at um, uh, stage seven with the alleged uh, gunshot wound. I would have picked him up in addition to the nine. But because of this situation, we make sure that we rush him to the nearby clinic. But we will still be under arrest because he will be a potential uh, witness to investigations. But we didn't see, I, I didn't see anybody with a, a gunshot wound on the leg. No, my Lord, I didn't see. I, the, those that we laid eyes on in my presence, those are the, the nine that we arrested and sent to the police station. Okay, this person who you said, you now know that he sustained gunshot wounds and is at the hospital. Have you interviewed him? My Lord, uh, as I'm, I've stated, I can't even confirm that the injury is from gunshot. I can't confirm. But Have you interviewed him? Myself? Yes, or no. your many members of your team. You know, is he, I, I'm the leader of the team. Yes. So if, uh, my Lord, if I, I don't interview him, I don't think any of my men can go and interview. But I know for sure the investigators have gone to interview him from the CID headquarters. Okay. Do you know his name? I can't um, recollect his name. I I can't keep it. The the SWAT team was it a standing team or was that team composed for this specific operation? Yes, sir. It it was composed. You know. Sir, um, depending on the nature of the operations, sometimes, sometimes we, 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 we add women because we have some two women at, at, at in, on our strength. There are some operations which need the presence of women so that when you go, you use the women to confront women. If there will be any body search or something, because a man cannot search, it's not allowed. You know, so that this particular um, event, the men that we used were well oriented. That this is what the possibility of us going to conduct, go down and search operation. So that's what we put in their mind during the briefing. All right, um, the, you have an armory, right? Yes, please. National Security has an armory. Yes, my lord. The weapons you took for this operation came from the armory. Yes, my lord. That is the National Security SWAT unit. Unit. Yes, sir. They have an armory. Yes, sir. And when they go on operation, yes, sir. they get their weapons from that armory. Yes, sir. Now, how many empty shells Yes, sir. Did you recover from this operation? Yes, sir. Apart from the six which you said you fired. Yes, sir. Um, the, the, the three police officers I ordered to fire, one fired only one gun, one shot. The second fired two. Then the third fired three. And they, I made sure they pushed it. Push it. So immediately they fired. They bent down and picked their shells. They bent down and picked their shells. But I made sure that I told them they pick, pick their shells, so they picked them. And they are all accounted for. What about other empty shells? Did it, did it not come to your notice that there were many other empty shells which um, were found at the location where the incident took place? Yes, my, my lord, after, my, my interest was my boys recovering the shot that they fired because it is, so, so far as it is a warning shot, you have to account for each shot. So I asked them to pick the empty shots. And from there, we, because these people were pestering us, 
cutting out with stones and we, we hearing gunshots from the inside. We, I, I will not even look on the ground to look for uh, uh, empty shots, my Lord. Right, let me just ask you a few questions. Lastly, on the command structure of the SWAT team. Yes, my lord. So you report to who? Um, my lord, police administrative, administration wise, I report to the Director General Operations Police Headquarters. That is on administrative issues concerning police. But on operational issues. Operational issues. I will report direct to my director operations, national security. Who is it? Who is, who is Colonel Michael Opoku? I report to him direct. Then he if the information you know needs to be given to the police, he will give then give it to the director general operations police, Ghana, Ghana police. And he is on the who who does he report to? Uh, director General, yeah. uh, Director Operations. Yeah. Yeah, he is in charge of the national security operations. So he reports directly to the minister. National security. The minister? Yes, my lord. Uh, by the minister, you mean? Um... National security minister. Yeah. Mr. Okay. Khan. Uh, Honorable Mr. Khan. Yes. Okay. What about <laughs> Mr. Brian Achampo, the minister? At the presidency for national security. Yes, my lord. Who reports to him and how does he relate to the minister in terms of operations? My lord, that one I can't tell. You don't know. Yes, my lord. Okay, thank you. Thank you. DSP. Azuku. Azuku. For your testimony. Um, you said you've been in this SWAT unit for a year? Yes, my lord. Do you have any idea um, when the SWAT unit was formed? My lord. It's quite a long time, probably over 20 years. Over 20 years? Yes, my lord. The people you are in the uh, team with at this time? Yes, my lord. When did they join? Um, most of them were transferred to the unit on the resumption of this present government. So some they've been there since 2017. Did you go and meet some of them there when you took over? Yes, my lord. I met almost all of them because I, I'm the latest addition over a year now. You are the latest addition. It's my lord. Does the SWAT unit have any relationship with the FPUs? My Lord, do you mean the national security? The SWAT team in the national security and the FPUs in the police. Do you have any relationship? Oh, uh, yes, uh, my Lord. Uh, sometimes we, we collaborate with them on operation when we are conducting operations outside Accra and even within Accra. Sometimes we we invite them to join us to assist in some of our operations. You indicated that uh, the people wore some uniforms uh, and you were describing them. How come they are ginger colored uniforms and not police blue? Uh, my Lord, you mean which of them? The operatives or the police? Whoever you, you went out with, 
Yes, sir. We have the police and the operatives. And the police were in black. Oh, blue black police uniform. Yes, like. yes, sir. Uh, yes, my lord. Blue black and camouflage. We have this police camouflage uniform. Then we wear the vests, the bulletproof vests, with the helmets. So who were in the brown? Or, or they, they are the yeah. operatives. I thought you said they were wearing black t shirts. Yes, sir. They, they wear black t shirts. You know, the, the, the brown. Um, down that they wear. Normally when they go for training, when they go for training, that's what they wear. But some of, most of them, they are supposed to wear the black top with other um, jeans or something. But because they want to be uniform, they, they want to be, be in uniformity, they decide to wear the uniform that they use in training for them to, they, 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 that they wear. Are you saying that the men, when they are going on operation, decide what to wear? No, my lord. No, my lord, but because, my lord, um, when they do that, they appear uniformed, and which makes for ease of identification. You know, when we go out and maybe um, we engage, you will know that this man is with you, this man is with you. So this is an approved uniform? Not really, not really. It's only the t-shirt. The t-shirt that have been issued to them to be wearing. But the, the other accoutrement, they get it from training. That when they go for training, that's what they use. You mean the police officers? No, sir, the police, the operatives. As? And they dress as they like. No. As long as they are wearing black t-shirts, it doesn't matter what else they are wearing. Is that what you're saying? Yes, my lord. Okay. So how do you know, at any point in time, how do you know who in your unit is going with you, since they can wear whatever they want? Um, at this point, my lord, I don't really understand if you can elaborate a bit because, you know, we have to... Uh, These operatives are civilians. Yes, civilian operatives, yes, sir. But they yes. wear uniforms. That is the t-shirts, yes, my lord. A uniform can be anything as long as everybody is wearing it. Yes, my lord. So they wear uniforms, but they are civilians. Yes, my lord. And you say they wear that ginger-colored trousers because that's what they wear when they go for training. Yes, my lord. So you are, in a sense, it's been a, become an approved uniform for operations. My lord, with all due respect, uh, that is not approved. It's not an approved uniform. But they wear it anyway, and nobody has complained. Least of all their commander. Now these police officers assigned to your unit, you say there's no time limit for them to stay. Yes, my lord. But you said they were seconded. Are you using seconding in a loose fashion? Yes, sir. Uh, my, my, uh, my lord, they, actually, they have been transferred. So it's a transfer? Yes, my lord. Okay. And my lord, I have the records of transfer, the postings, everything here. So you are also on transfer? Yes, sir. To the National Security? Ours is postings, the officers posting. And you say that you have an administrative relationship with the Director General of Operations? Yes, my lord. So if the Director General of Operations says he doesn't know you, what would be your reaction to? My Lord, I will be surprised. <laughs> okay. You said that you had a national security assignment to go on confidence building. Yes, my Lord. And you are supposed to go on patrols. Yes, my Lord. Or confidence building. Whose confidence were you building? 
My Lord, um, as part of the Intel, we heard that there were people who had infiltrated the constituency purposely to foment trouble on innocent civilians, taking advantage of the the elections which was being held. So um, as a contribution from the national security, we decided that we will show our presence within the area so that any potential uh, trouble maker will revise his or her notes. So was it confidence building or confidence sapping? Because you obviously went to sap the confidence of these people you said had infiltrated the constituency. So you arrived at the Presby, Labawaleshi Presby School. Yes, my lord. At about 8.15. Yes, my lord. You are doing confidence building. My, my, my lord, as I stated, the intel included that we will, there will be a possible cordon and search of a particular facility around that area. So uh, we proceeded to that location and were putting in place measures to make our deployment very smooth without any disruption to whatever activity is going around uh, the area, including the free flow of traffic and the uh, not to disrupt the election, which was also taking place in the adjacent buildings. You said your activity was not election related. Yes, but please. But you were doing confidence building. Yes, please. And you said you drove around the streets of the area. Yes, please. And this was supposed to intimidate anybody who had uh, nefarious plans. My, my lord, not to intimidate, but to um, preempt uh, any person who has um, the nefarious plans to commit, foment any trouble. You know, we are showing our visibility around the area, but not to get the issue. Did it occur to you that you would sap the confidence of members of the public who were going to vote? Uh, my Lord, in a way, um, you may be, you, 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 in a way, you, are, you will be correct to say that but looking at the issue at stake um, of people trying to use um, some means to foment or inflict pain on other innocent Ghanaians, um, I believe you know it was something we, we, we ought to do in the interest of the state. So you moved there with how many vehicles? Ten vehicles. Ten? Yes, madam. And this was not enough to intimidate anybody, so you had to go to a location and uh, act up there. Ma'am, ma um, my lord. Never mind, never mind. Ma my lord, um, due to our numbers, we are assisting. And the ten vehicles, it was my, 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 my lord, it was only the hunter, the that um, special, uh, special purpose vehicle, which is which has been splashing all over the internet. It's because most people have not been seeing it outside in town, it became that is what was the early element of our convoy which made the the, 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 the movement very intimidating. You know, 
Okay. Okay. All right. All right. So, thank you, sir. Go on, please. So, ma'am, um, that is the, the reason why you know the convoy was on because of the numbers. We we could not you know fix. We didn't have any alternative uh, vehicles, so we used those small pickups. We did not pick enough. You stated in the CITREP that you went to that school for confidence building. Yes, please. And all the, the police and the civilians were all mixed up in these 10 vehicles? Yes, please. We, we, we. Was there a chain of command? In each vehicle, my lord. In each vehicle? Yes, my lord. So you indicated that you did not see the assault on the member of parliament. I, I didn't witness it. Because where you were was different from where that happened. My, my lord, I would like to explain that at the end of everything, when we were about to move, even, my lord, I was even worried. I was, you know, I, because I did not see him from the point where we were being pelted with the stones, I was worried that, oh, what is going on? Um, if something should happen to this honorable MP, what are we going to, or am, am I going to say? Because people saw me interacting with him, running towards that direction, and he goes missing. And so as at that time, I didn't even know what was happening to him. So even when we were moving away, you know, I was reluctant to move. I wanted to make sure I've seen him. But because we have to move, we're moving. And my vehicle, as I stated, my vehicle was on the main road in the convent. It was in the main road. And the remaining vehicles have to arrange themselves before we move. We, we, before we move, we arrange ourselves in the positioning that, original position that we, we had so that we can move smoothly. So whilst I was looking at the, the, the head side of the video, whilst I was in my vehicle and we were about to move, that was when the incident, and I don't know why the Honorable MP chose to come to the end, because that, I believe that was the seventh vehicle in the Congo. And I believe he could have even approached me if you had any reservation, you could have approached me in my vehicle because we were about to move. Looking at the, uh, the video that is showing. But he decided yes, to... I haven't seen any video that's showing. So yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm looking to hear from you what happened. Yes. So, uh, your, uh, my lord, it was the, with the hand side of video that I saw that actually my MP was alive, he, he had no problem, but he chose to be escorted by people to go and attack my boys in the, in the, in the convoy when he knows that I was there. Officer, you are making me sad. You had gone to a place, uh, there had been a, a bit of a melee. Your MP was there. You were worried about him, wondering what where he had got up to, because if anything happened to him, you would have to account for it. You didn't get out from your vehicle to look for him? My, my lord, apparently, he was part of those who entered the building. Part of those who succeeded in entering the building, which was under lock. Are you guessing? Or you know for I, sure? I, I know for sure, because those boys who were escorting him after when he was allowed to be assaulted, I never set eyes, even though they were not part of the riders. The uniform they were wearing. One was wearing the riders were wearing uniform. No, no, no. They were wearing normal uh the mufti. Mufti. They were, they were not uniform. They were wearing no, but this particular gentleman who escorted him towards my 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 men in the vehicle. They were also wearing the violet trousers with top black. Even one of them had his 
um, dress hooded. So I was asking, ah, so where were these men? So they were in uniform. They were also in a uniform which looks exactly like what my men, uh, my, my uh, operatives were also wearing. Now you said that you were worried about him. So, you, and you didn't check up on him. So when did you see that he was with uniformed people? It was with the benefit of the video. The video which so is, it is hindsight. Hindsight, yes, my So Lord. you have no way of knowing if they they were uniformed people. And that he was with them. And that he took uh, shelter in the locked building. You have no way of authenticating any of this information. At that particular moment, my Lord, no, please. Then why are you saying so? Why are you saying he ran into the building? He must have run into the building that, with that, them and so on. My Lord, that is the information I got from onlookers, my Lord. Civilian onlookers? My Lord, yes. Gave Father. you information for tactical purposes? My Lord, later, later on, after the incident, somebody called me and informed me. After the incident, so the, what you are recounting is hearsay. You had gone to a, a place, you in police uniform, to do an operation. You, your member of parliament shows up there. There's a bit of a melee. In your own words, there was firing, and you were beginning to worry about this office holder who must be endangered somehow. You didn't look for him. You left and watched a video later and um, heaved a sigh of relief that he's alive after all. But does that sound good to you, officer? My, my, my lord, as I stated already, the building, any, any possible means that we could have used to enter would have result degenerated into something else because of the situation at, at, hand, at that particular moment. Okay, when you move um, for an operation, there are police officers and there are civilians. Yes, my lord. So who is in charge of the civilian component? The police, the commander. Before deployment. So they are assigned to you? Yes, my lord. So you know who you are going with? Yes, my lord. So you don't need their masks to be taken off before you know who? Oh, my lord. Immediately you are masked because they are in uniform. I, unless you move your mask sometimes before I see. But commander, you said the mask is not part of their uniform. They use it to protect themselves from mosquitoes. Yes, my lord. So if they are wearing them at a place where there are no mosquitoes, surely the commander is in charge and can ask the people to dress properly because this is an official operation. My, my lord, I use the mosquito analogy as oh, it was an analogy. As an example. I use it as an example. That that mask that we use, it depends on the type of operation that we perform at the particular time. You know, sometimes if you say we are going to Kema, we are going to Takrate, they know what kind of operation we are going to conduct and for that matter they pick the necessary accoutrements along. And I'm saying that that mask, you know, legitimately when we go on operation, they are allowed those who are known in the locality for the sake of their identity not to be known they are allowed to wear it. But because it is on them always, based on the locality that you, you, you will be, you will be tempted to use it because you don't want your identity to be, to be known. So they were wearing their masks with your approval? At that particular moment, I cannot vouch for that because as I, I stated, during the chaos, I couldn't have the luxury of, you know, looking at each of them who is masked, who is not masked, because it was so chaotic that 
even if somebody masks himself, it will be after everything that I will see somebody. And they know that if you are not supposed to be masked and you mask and I see you, I'll ask you to remove it. In the, in the chaos. They know very well that if I see you and you're not supposed to be masked and you are masked, I'll ask you to remove it. So who are those who wear these masks? The policemen or the civilians? Both. Both can wear, wear, wear masks. Because we all, all... Masks to go and do an operation at 8.15 in the morning at a place where there are school children, at a place where voters are going to vote. And it is such a dangerous war zone that people must go with accoutrements. Is that what you are saying, officer? My lord, oh, it wasn't a war zone, my lord. I should uh, hope not, because I drive there quite often. Yes, ma'am. And there were school children in school, when there? Or it wasn't a school day. It was a first day. Yes, the, my lord. The children who had the day off. I, uh, that day, I did not, you know, it didn't really occur to me. So this firing, um, no, before then, you said you had set off to do um, this uh, confidence building. Then you got information that there was uh, intelligence that you should go and do something else. And so you went there. Uh, my Lord, our, our core mandate was that there, there, there will be a probable cordon and search operation at a location. But before the green light will come, we will conduct a confidence building within the jurisdiction before we probably conduct the, uh, the exercise. So did I misunderstand you when you said I was given an information while setting off for our location that there was an intelligence of stockpiling of weapons or something like that. So I must go to that area to make arrangements for deployment. You said something to that effect. Oh, my, my, my Lord, I, the information, it, it depends, depending on what, uh, I don't think I stated this here. Uh, did I state it here today? Yes, sir. My, my Lord, I did not state that I had a, before we set out. The briefing was that there was a possibility that as we are going, there will be a probable cordon and search operation at a location within that enclave. So, that is why you went with 60 people. Sir, my, my, uh, my lord, when you are going to cordon you off, carry on, they are recording. Okay, when you are going to cordon off an area to operate, and taking into the fact that that day was an election day, and there will be a lot of civilian pedestrians, onlookers, observers around that facility. We have to put, um, deploy enough men to work off, to cordon the place, to cordon the place, not by even showing, you know, by positioning themselves so that if anybody is coming, they work them off. They work them off. That is the main purpose of deploying that number. To make sure that we 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 operate and um, without any collateral damage. You said you met some the bikers going to the police station. Uh, Mom, I didn't. We didn't meet them. Whilst we were there, trying to direct and control the traffic, the I saw them coming towards 
the biology primary school in the convoy escorting the honorable honorable MP with other two vehicles to the location. And when they got there, what happened? They got there, those the pillion, some of the motorbikes were carrying two pillions, one, two, all those at the back of the uh, bikes dropped down. Then the motorbikes moved to the back. And they approached where we were exchanging pleasantries with the... And I was actually exchanging pleasantries. I was greeting the, uh, the uh, MPs. After that, I, I approached them and asked them of their mission in that area. Then they said they were coming to protect the ballot. Then I made it clear to them that they should see around. They should look over there. They can see police, immigration. The state has made enough provision for security. So their presence is not needed. And I was saying this with a view that their presence they might hinder our probable operation that we're going to. We may or may not conduct that operation that we, 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 we rely on intelligence to conduct. If they are there, they may hamper our successful operations. So I ask them to leave. They, they are not needed there. Did you link up with the one commanding the detachment at the polling station? Uh, you know, Mom, the, uh, yes, I remember she said, uh, police uh, um, ASP, I only greeted her. But I didn't even, because she, she came to me, because she saw that I'm, uh, I'm a senior. So she came to me, we greeted each other, and she left. But I know she saw them, because that aspect, she is supposed to report to the tax force that this is what he has, she has seen, because on that election day, it was made known to all parties, according to my source, sources that I have, that um, nobody should use motorbikes. There, there's, there's no uh, use of motorbikes within the constituency. So that action clearly was, you know, a breach of the uh, whatever arrangement that they had done. As the superior. Did you instruct her to inform the operations people that some people had breached the motorbike room? I, I, when she came to greet me, I called her attention to the issue. So I know by all means she will, I drew her attention to the fact that... Did you instruct her to report or you left it to her own wisdom to determine whether she should report or not? Mom, because... My mission there was not purely election related. And I, mean, I, I confronted them because of our, our impending operation that we're going to conduct in the area. That's why I even confronted them. I would, I would have kept quiet. You know, but because we we're going to have an operation and their presence there was not needed at all, which I'm probably, you know, hamper our support operation. So it didn't worry you that motorbikers had arrived at a polling station in breach of instructions that had already gone out for you to take action on that? On that. My Lord, because they were in the company of two honorables, and I, I knew very well that um, it, uh, it was well noted and they, they, they will be reported and the next action will be taken. Because I didn't believe it to be light in my favor. Take that action. You said you arrested nine people. Yes, ma'am. What What were they doing? They were They were part of the, those who were surging towards us amidst throwing of stones and firing of gunfire at the back in the uh, compound. You know, as I told you, when we are we are approaching, they said in their numbers and moving ferociously towards us, throwing, pelting us with stones, and they were firing gun uh, gunshots at the background. 
And that was where I asked my, my men. At the background, how far from the place where you were? Um, but then you'd have seen who was firing. No, the fire, actually, the firing was coming from yeah, because they, they, they were leveling more than 100. So the, num the, the firing was coming from the back of the group which was surging forward. And so, you ordered that uh, your people should fire warning shots? Yes, sir. Yes, my lord. And when they fired warning shots, you said the people then began to run they, the skelter. They retreated, you know. And I, I, you use the expression health Yes, sir. Uh, my lord, I don't know which if, what information got to them. Because their movement was so spontaneous that they were surprised to meet us with, with you know, warning shots. So they suddenly retreated and started to run, find any way they can. So most of them ran towards the gate. But not all of them were able to enter the gate. The gate was locked, eventually. And those who could not enter, they said, okay, I will not let you go free. I will arrest some of you. For you to go and testify why you, you did this to us. This, this was in a very well, uh, highly built up area. Yes, ma'am. So there could have been people just coming to look at what was happening. Uh, oh, well, the, the way the, the ferocity of the group which was moving, if somebody, no by, um, I don't believe a bystander, onlooker, will join them to, you know, move with stone, throwing stones. But you couldn't tell who was throwing stones, so... The, yes, mama. Yes. So, so the people you arrested, what did you arrest them for? For routing. For routing. You told yes. them so? Yes. Uh, the, the, the suspects. Yes. Yes, sir. For routing and... Um, the, yes, for routing. Initially, that was the, the uh, charge that I gave them. But later, we are reviewing what other charges we have against them. But you told them they were there. They, you were arresting them for rioting. For just attacking us and routing. You arrested nine people. Yes, ma'am. But the station diary records seven people as having been brought to the station. So what did you do with the two others? Uh, my lord, to, I, to the best of my knowledge, I sent nine to the police station and handed them over. Were you there when the station officer recorded or whoever station orderly or whoever does the recording uh, were you there when they recorded uh, in their station diary i gave them i handed them over to the station officer and um, gave my particulars in the location they were arrested and stated initial as initial um report to them but they were arrested at this location for what I stated. And did you add that you would come back for them? Yes, yes, sir. Um, um, anytime national security operates, we, when we arrest, we, call, we arrest or we um, get um, evidence or anything, we look at the appropriate quarters. Like, for say, this case, for instance, we we'll only hand them over to the national uh, uh, CID headquarters, sometimes BNI, based on the nature of the, um, the case at hand. You, so, you said you had, uh, you called for reinforcement. Yes, ma'am. At what point did you call for reinforcement? Immediately, we retreated. It to be retreated. And the place was so chaotic. I read you. 
for reinforcement. Who did you radio to? I called the um, the control. Which control? Police headquarters control. You radio to police headquarters. The control. So you didn't talk to the director general of operations. No, I t I spoke to him. I I, I after after calling him about the suspects. After calling him about the suspects arrested, then he decided that we should take send, send them to the uh, the East Legon Police Station. And I added that you know we need reinforcement back before them because when we are going to call the director at once, it will maybe uh, delay. So when you radio that one, it's more faster than calling them. So when you radio that one, any other unit around will react faster than passing through the director and going to. You knew there was an election task force. I, I, my lord, I know for sure that there, there should be one. And you were not interested in getting to them first to tell them there was a problem in a particular area? Um, you my, radioed to headquarters that there was a problem. Uh, we needed reinforcement. And you needed reinforcement. What kind of reinforcement did you ask for? My lord, the task force were not stationed at the laboratory, they were at Legon. Legon in, in